President Uhuru Kenyatta has delivered his first State of the Nation address since his re-election. The president spoke about the steps made in implementing Kenya's constitution. He said the constitution is meant to ensure a freer, a fairer, wealthier and more united Kenya. The president also addressed persistent corruption concerns in the country, but assured that his administration is putting mechanisms in place to ensure less graft in the country. Kenyatta's State of the Nation address comes after months of election drama in Kenya. The country had to hold elections twice. Kenyatta acknowledged that and said that the Kenyan people are just fair, honest and tolerant and that they are ahead of their leaders in that regard. He's urged all leaders in Kenya to demonstrate a commitment to serve. Well, let's get you more perspective on the State of the Nation address in Kenya. I'm joined in studio by political analyst Gabriel Musuma. Gabriel, thank you for joining us on Africa Live. First, the president has made his uh, State of the Nation address. What's your take Beatrice, on his speech? Beatrice, thank you so much for having me. Well, it was a raft of so many things. And like you put it, you know, some of the things that we had, corruption. I think he tackled the software issues very well. And you may recall this is what actually Kenyans were talking about. We had at least you know, had a raft of things that the president was going to talk about. But really what got to me and uh, to many people that I've been able to talk to since the, uh, the delivery of the state of the address uh, is the fact that the president brought in everybody when he talked about forgiveness. We have to look forward now to ensuring that we run away from politics of division. He actually eloquently put it, no life in Kenya should be lost because of politics. And he actually took leaders to task. You know, when he said, remember the sacred duty of you, first of all, serving the nation, and he took the bow. I've never seen this with any other African leader, leader alone the Kenyan leader, where he goes into parliament and asks for forgiveness and reaches out to everybody. Let us shake hands so that this country can remain united. That was a very good deal for the president. So there was a lot of talk about uh, healing the country, uniting the country, you know, setting aside the political drama. But he did also mention his so-called Big Four agenda. What's, what's that about? What are those constitutional reforms and the Big Four agenda? Very good question. One, you remember the Big Four, actually, I think you had people who went out Side there and the Kenyans speaking through their elected leaders, those were some of the few things that were actually ailing Kenyans. If you look, you know, when you just, you know, touch on the big force, things like healthcare, we are no longer talking just about healthcare, we are talking about affordable and quality healthcare. That is something that has actually ailed this nation since the beginning of time. When you look at manufacturing, I mean, we know, you know, we, we've done very little in that regard. When you look at housing, you know, the population is growing, but yes, they are many concrete jungles coming along but still cannot be a you know their the housing is, is still an issue people many people cannot be able to afford that so when you look at the compounding the big four agenda what the president was talking about is that this is the game changer for me and me for, for him to leave a legacy that must be entrenched not only through the national dialogue but also through the counties and you uh, you saw we had uh, the governor's conference in Kakamega some uh, few weeks ago and many governors who actually read and are starting to understand what the big four uh, really is have started to you know to, to warm up and actually talk about the big four in their respective counties so if you look in the generality of things the big four according to the president this is a game changer this is what will set things apart for this nation well Kenya as well has been dealing with the aftermaths of uh, the election we just mentioned earlier it's been you know it was a year of drama in Indeed 2017 was, yeah. so uh, just how much of that has taken a toll on the economy Oh, largely. You know, three groups, if I may uh, quote very quickly, were affected. We start by investors. What happens when you don't have a conducive environment? No investor will come in and put their money. That directly affects, you know, the industry, the technology, and what have you. When you look at the other sphere of people who are affected, they are the people, me and you. Guess what? We will hold on to our money. What does that do? It takes at all, you know, to, to our exchange rate. Nobody wants to transact. Nobody wants to do business. The third group is, you know, the business people. They have been crying, you know, for the past two years. They are saying, you know, this environment, this electioneering environment is hurting business. And we saw former business uh, bitteries lost 700 billion shillings. And so what does that do eventually to the taxman? He will not be able to raise the money that he needs. And guess what? Critical uh, things are going to be affected. The reservoir, you know, is also right. going to be affected and thereby 
there are so many things that we cannot you know bring to fruition again the big four things like the uh, healthcare that will also be affected so it really took a toll even though we are talking about heading in the right direction we saw there you know the nation has started healing right. tourism raised by 20 percent which is good but we cannot forget to say that it did indeed it took a serious toll in our economy gabriel mutuma we leave it there for the moment thank you for your insights on kenya's situation thank you.